everybody, I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thanks for joining me on today's video presentation of what I call some serious style. And you say, well, Tony, I'm not sure if I love the first gen bird or the square bird or the bullet bird or the other birds that come even later. Like I'm all over the fence. And I say, you know what? You're absolutely right because they're all so very different. However, this is the styling of this era that was so cool. I just love the 50s and I think to myself, wow, what were the 50s and, and early 60s uh, like when we had no internet and no microwave oven and no color TV and all of these things we have today, but how much better might it have been, right? This car, while stunning in this showroom, outside on the street is a game changer. Everybody, everybody who looks at it is thumbs up, like, oh my God, no one's ever seen it. They don't even understand what it is. It's, it's like an exotic car from the 50s. All right, so I want to talk about things like the style for a second. The style is, is, I don't know, man. I just think it's great looking. Like, just take a minute. Don't just glance over how beautiful this car is, but look at the effort that's gone into the styling. The jet age is here, right? The jet age is here upon us, the late 50s, uh, before, the, uh, before the next war that's coming. And we are styling these cars, right? with jet components built into the look of it, right? To make the car look like it's already going fast. Even the late 50s, uh, even the 57 T-Bird with the jet engine style kind of taillights and things like that. It's just with fins that are, that are wings and representative of that era is cool. That's all. I just like to share with people a lot of times because the people say, wow, that's a great looking car, but you don't really know why it's a great looking car. And I like to point out just a few things. So take a moment and look at the effort that goes into styling a car. It's not like somebody sketched that on a napkin and threw it across his desk and said, go ahead and build it. It doesn't really work like that. There's a lot of effort into it, so you should see that. Anyway, this is a low mileage example, and I want to tell you what that means because that is an important piece of this car in general. When a car is low mileage and very original, it hasn't been taken completely apart and put back together. It 99% of the time drives much better than a fully restored car. Don't know why that's the case. For some reason, factory built cars just still drive really well. In this case here, we do have a new interior. We do have new paint because it would have been, you know, uh, 60 plus years old. And uh, that's really important. And lastly here, we have radial tires, right? Radial tire had not been invented yet. And if you were gonna show this car nationally, right? Take it to national T-Bird shows. Uh, you're going to need to change out those tires for uh, bias ply tires unless you're okay with being deducted for the radials. The reason we have radial wide whites on the car is because it drives so much better. And I'm talking about uh, significantly better than the original tires, one of the best inventions that ever happened to the automotive industry. All right, lastly, we like to talk about paint. White cars don't show up with white paper uh, in these lights very well, but I can just tell you that uh, this is super great, but Look at how crisp the font is. Like it's not as, as bright as say maybe a red car or a black car, but I still wanna show you that because in here, okay. All right, what I love about this is you can see all the letters nice and crisp. Remember, this is a factory correct E color code, colonial white car with blue interior, which is the right color combination. And it just looks crystal clear. It's why we do this, it's why we do the video on these cars. You wanna be able to see how great things look in a video because pictures can be manipulated and this right here gives you the raw feeling of exactly what you're getting, shiny and beautiful. All right, listen, we have two different types of people who, uh, who get these cars here. Some people just want a cool car to drive. Other people want to take it to shows. I respect both of them. I think they're great. Uh, I like to make sure, though, that if you do want to go to a show or you do want to show your friends in your garage uh, under the hood and trunk and things like that, that it's detailed as well. All right. This has springs in it. The original springs holding the trunk up is functioning just the way it should, and it's detailed the way it should as well. With the black block, uh, the blue valve covers, air cleaner, we have a couple small parts coming. This is car just arrived, and we're just finishing up uh, the stuff. Like we have the uh, correct air hose that goes here, but it's very detailed in here. Very easy to see things. Um, the C-Clear washer fluid bag is there. The voltage regulator is stamped with the Ford on it, right? This is the correct overflow tank in here. We'll have the battery and battery topper on here when you get it, right? All of these little things are things that if you go to a show or you go to uh, get judged somewhere, are all nice important things that when you open the hood, it looks really original, circa 1959. Remember we talked about under the hood when we were there before. We have two types of people who love these cars. Somebody who just wants a cool car to to drive and go to dinner and go to work, stuff like that in, and other people would like to go to some car shows, cars and coffee and whatever. Again, this car is exactly for both of you. Here's why, right? If you look inside here, okay, check this out. 
This is so beautifully done in here. This is a high-end car. It was expensive for its time because it has things done to it that a Chevelle or uh, you know, uh, a Galaxy or something like that might not have had done to it, right? For instance, this is all finished in the trunk here in this houndstooth, right? This may not seem like a big deal to you, but back then, this was an expensive part of the car. These cars, some of these cars, not this car in particular, but some of these cars were 1800 bucks for a new car, right? That's pretty uh, a pretty inexpensive car. However, they needed to keep the cost down and that's how they saved money. In this case here, they wanted to take on the sport coupe market. And so they were willing to do things that no one else was willing to do. This is beautifully done in here. The jack is right where it's supposed to be. The spare tire is in there. This is insulation for the underneath of the, uh, the trunk so that it keeps the whole car quiet as well. It's little detail stuff that separates these cars from others. I love this shot here where we talk about walking up to your car because I think that this is exactly what you should be doing. Walking up to your car, you're at work, it's on a Friday, right? On a Friday, you coming on and you get to see what everybody else sees and you go ahead and get in here, which not everybody else gets to enjoy, all right? And you get in this cool freaking car, man. Look at this dash setup. Look at this interior. Look at the, the room that people can have back here. Imagine going to dinner with another couple in this car, right? Imagine taking the kids somewhere in it they're looking, listen, we have people come here all the time with their kids and they point at these uh, window cranks. They go, what are those, right? They've never seen a roll-up window. How crazy is that? This dash is T-Bird all the way, right? Beautifully trimmed here. Great HVAC system here. Full console that runs the full length of the car here, right? This is not a cheap car, man. This is a luxury car, a luxury sport coupe that a lot of money was spent on, uh, on these cars when they were new. I get so excited about these. This has a three-speed automatic. In the 50s, you know, GM just had a two-speed automatic. There's a lot of things here that made for a different car. The footwell lighting is working. The clock is working in the car. This is the original AM radio still in here. I mean, it's, this is what I'm talking about. This is a beautiful car, and uh, getting in it and enjoying it makes it even more beautiful. And lastly, uh, if you'd like, we can also hide a, a digital sound system in the glove box, kind of leaving the whole system uh, the whole 50s vintage vibe here uh, and place but able to stream your music from your phone take a phone call do all that good stuff if you wanted to all right so let's close up this video we talked about a lot of stuff so we have a really original car but this had some great updates and things like that done to it when we drive this car i just want to share with you i'm smiling right now because i've driven this car out there and when you drive this car there's nothing out there that looks like it nothing you go out to dinner with another couple in this car. They are putting this car out front in front of the prime rib, right? And moving that Porsche around back because there's no way that they want to take their eyes off of that. You pull up there to a restaurant in this, everyone who walks out is talking about that car. Why? Because it's beautiful and it's not ridiculous money either. It's why these are still a great value and a great buy. You got to find a way to get this. And it's kind of all original too, right? It's got the 352 and it. it's got the original color combination in here. Spend some time looking at the pictures, the detail of the interior. Uh, Angie pointed out how great the, uh, um, the relief is on the sill plates. Uh, the door panels are really good. The seats are amazing, right? The door panels are all special custom there. Look at the dash. All of that stuff is what makes a car so great looking. Anyway, call us 301 816 1000. We'll tell you all about this uh, 59 T Bird. And if you don't mind, uh, hit the subscribe channel down below there. I think you'll see some new stuff coming out at the time. Hit the like button as well. It helps get our message out. I really appreciate that. And don't forget, maybe share it with your friends. They might like to see some of this too. And I'll see you on the test drive. All right, so what's it like to drive a car from the 50s, right? And you're like, man, I've lucked at that. Is it a hard car to drive? Is it an easy car to drive? And I say, just watch this. We're just going to go for a drive. Let's see. On a nice windy road. And just comfortable. I can imagine having like another couple. We're headed to dinner. Right? Some friends in the back. We're going to the club. Might have to join the club, I guess. But anyway, I'm going somewhere. Somewhere cool. And I think to myself, they're gonna park this out front or they're gonna park it in the parking garage. And I know for a fact, it's going right out front because it's art. This is a piece of art on wheels. Think about that. This is 2024, we're doing this video, right? Approaching the 70 year mark on this car. And we're just going for a drive. Think about that. We're just going for a drive in it and everything's working like it's supposed to. 
super, super nice. Yeah. And just easy. Just easy. Maybe just an easier time back there, back then. Made for easier driving. I don't know. But it sure is easy to, to, to enjoy. It sure is easy to smile. And I think I'm, I think I'm, I'm good on saying, you know what? Not, might not be a bad idea to throw a, a, a modern stereo in the glove box, leave all this kind of original looking, and, uh, and stream some music. And you can also pick some eras, like maybe you want to drive music in the 50s, 60s, or 70s. That would be cool. As we continue our classic journey, we're just, I don't know, man, we're just going for a drive and just rapping, just, just us, right? And we're talking about how easy it is, how nice it is, power steering. We forget to ask about things like that, right? A lot of cars didn't come with power steering. And they're, you know, they're not horrible, but they're work. This is not work. This is pleasurable. And I'm thinking, too, that you go to the boss and say, listen, I need a space out front for the bird. And he's going to say, for the bird, what's the bird? The T-bird, man, T-bird, don't, you know, don't you know nothing, right? 59 bird, it needs its own space. And he goes, you got a 59 bird? Yeah. All right, let me get you that space. Boom. 